they are an example of what happens when people who are oppressed decide to stop being oppressed. Hey, what's up, everybody? The time is finally here for Tariq Nasheed's fifth film, 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti. I've been waiting on this movie a long time. Just started following Tariq Nasheed not even a year ago, and I love the work that he produces. So is this latest documentary any good? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back. I want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti, directed, written, and produced by Mr. Tariq Nasheed. I've been looking forward to this documentary for quite some time, ever since Tariq Nasheed announced it uh, many, many months ago. And believe it or not, I'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. It's his best documentary yet. I mean, it was phenomenal. And one thing that I just noticed about it is how short it was. I mean, it wasn't too short, but it was like much shorter than his past three films, Hidden Colors 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4. With um, Hidden Colors 2, 3, and 4, pretty they're, they're the longest. Uh, Hidden Colors 1 is maybe like a maybe about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. And I have them right here. Uh, Hidden Colors... The Unsold History of People of Aboriginal, Moor, and African Descent. I got that one right there. That's part one. I got part two as well. Hidden Colors 2. The Triumph of Melanin. Got that right there. Part three is Hidden Colors. The Rules of Racism. And last but not least, I have Hidden Colors 4. The Religion of White Supremacy. I almost forgot the name of it right there. And of course, this one is 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti, his fifth his fifth film. And I saw these, um, I got these uh, last year in December um, at the end of the year, and I loved them. The first ones that I did watch was uh, Hidden Colors 3, The Rules of Racism, and then I watched Hidden Colors 4. And then I watched part one and part two. I don't know why I watched it in that order, but that's just the order that I wanted to watch it in. You know, I guess just from the subtitles, that's the one that appeal um, to me the most. Uh, real quick, before I actually get into the review of the documentary, um, how I feel about Tariq Nasheed, I have a ton of respect for the guy. I mean, I really do. He is one black man that actually goes out and does what he says. Something about the movie 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti, is towards the end of the documentary, I forgot what professor or historian that it was, but he was, I think it was Dr. Kaba Kimmon. And I, I love him, man. He is so dope. He is so cool, just so smooth, just, you know, like, I, I respect you, my brother. I think he was saying, like, you know, it's not that black people, not in just this country or Haiti or around the world, don't know what to do. Uh, it just really just takes courage. You know, you already have the blueprint there. It just takes courage or whatever. And I'm not trying to ride this jock or ride this jock to Rick Nasheed if you're watching this. But, you know, you are somebody that, you know, has courage. You know, you have these I these iPads, these uh, podcasts and these videos and these uploads. And you are really putting yourself out there fighting the system of white supremacy, trying to replace it with justice, you know, and uh, that can put a target on your head. And so, you know, that's what's up, my brother. I do respect you as far as that concern. As far as all of his content, you know, I've never read any of his old books like the Art of Macking or this or that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Initially, before I got into the Hidden Colors, um, uh, seeing the films, our documentaries, you know, I kind of heard just, of course, the negative rumors that, oh, he's this, he's that. But I mean, nobody's perfect. So, I mean, what do you expect? You got so many haters out there, especially Crispy. And we all know who that is that just, you know, I mean, any but anything, anytime somebody does something good, you just got to tr- go and find the dirt on them, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't agree with everything Tariq Nasheed has said. Um, there is a podcast bought with uh, Charlemagne the God and Andrew Schultz called The Brilliant Idiots, I believe. And I don't listen to that podcast on a normal uh, basis. Oh, I do not. uh Excuse me. Sorry about that. I don't watch that podcast on a normal basis, but there was uh, one excerpt that I did see from that interview. And there was something in that interview that really just 
ticked me off. Um, Tariq, I was like, oh, no, brother, you, you, you know, you got the knowledge, you got the wisdom. I mean, you're not a know it all and you don't come across that way either. But, you know, you can't say things like this because that'll, you know, ruin your credibility. But I could be wrong. I mean, for the most part, you know, he does provide receipts. You know, I was saying, OK, well, hey, if you don't believe me, read this book or read this article, etc. cetera. Uh, but anyway, I do respect the fact that you have the courage to make these films. They're very informative uh, while also being very entertaining. And I really do appreciate that as a film fan, as a movie fan and just, you know, somebody that's, uh, you know, trying to liberate black people from a system of oppression and white supremacy everywhere. But anyway, about the film, it is so much about the film. It is so um, much to take in. And what I'm struggling with right now as I'm talking to you guys is how much I do I want to talk about because I want to let you know what the film contained. But at the same time, I don't want to spoil it for you either. Um, you can go to 1804movie.com, 1804movie.com um, to find out more information about the film. But, um, you know, I pretty much loved it. There, I, I do have a, I don't want to call it a nitpick because, I mean, this dude here did this with less than $300,000. And that is amazing. Okay, the cheapest Hollywood movies are like, you know, two to five million dollars. You know what I'm saying? A lot, you know, and this is, you know, besides some of the graphics uh, doing some of the transitions, then I'm not saying that they were bad. They were good, especially given the budget. You know, um, this is, you know, nearly up there to that high quality, um, you know, high entertainment type of f filmmaking that, you know, a large production company will put out. You know, I'm not saying Walt Disney or something like that, but, you know, I am speaking about the lower um the lower budget of films that range in the two to four, uh, two to four, two to five million dollars. But this one, I think if you go to 1804movie.com and then you go to the Indiegogo website, I think he raised like two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars for this. And f to be able to pull all of this off that you did in this movie with the editing, I, I, I'm going to get all that. But just with everything, kudos to you, my brother. Kudos to you. You did that. I know that there was a ton of people in this whole production that got a, that did some stuff for free. So I want to thank you for doing that as well. You guys putting in all your time and your effort, your blood, sweat and tears and literally in a sense into making this documentary, because I can tell it was a lot of work put into it. And Tariq, and she was hyping it up. He was like, man, this, this 18 to 4 movie is so dope, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's so dope. I can't wait for you to see it all, man. Hey, man, when you get wait till you get to see these reaction scenes, man, these react the reenactment scenes or what I say, reaction reenactment scenes. And they, they was that was nice. That was, you know, but I, I'm jumping the gun right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting excited. But, you know, I got to give credit where credit is due and kind of give a little intro about how I came into this. And I could be talking forever, you know, but let me go ahead and get into the documentary 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti. So it starts out and it's not going to be no play by play or nothing like that. I'm not going to regurgitate everything that I saw but the movie can be divided into um, four sections I guess um, you have the intro where it's more of a, an extended trailer that you see online which is great it's just a, a good you know jolt of electricity to kind of get you on board to what you're about to intake and then after that you kind of have a brief history all of, of over Haiti and then you you talk about four key figures that are very important that, uh, you know, have their time, their prominent time in Haiti from about the mid to early 1700s up until the end of the war in uh, 1804. Then you have the aftermath and then you have proje projections of the future. Now, out of all four of those sections, I will go ahead and admit now my absolute favorite was uh, section part two, where the documentary did focus on the four key players, uh, four important figures um, that led uh, the rebellion. And the thing about this documentary about the rebellion, there was not just one battle. I mean, this thing took a number of decades and what it was was. African people and Haitian people, you know, coming together, you know, not being afraid of who they are and just continuing on the legacy that was planted right before. And I say planted for a certain reason, because there was two key points in this documentary to where uh, they talk about the seeds are already planted. And just like I, I work with a Haitian guy. Uh, he's in his 40s, like 43, 44, 45, something like that. And he just has a lot of pride about him. You know, he's not cocky. He's not arrogant, anything like that. He's just he just he's proud of who he is. You know, I mean, he he 
he's confident in who he is, but knows he still has room to grow. You know, that's, that's just the basic, you know, uh, definition of confidence, I guess. Um, but he's still humble. And this film really talks about the resilience and just the, the o- overall aura of the Haitian people. And, you know, it is noticeable. Uh, and it's put on the forefront in this documentary, you know, common sense. You know, it, it, it is about them. It, it would it, it definitely would talk about that. Um, I have so many notes here, like because I don't want to um, I don't want to leave anything out. As far as all the historians and the, the scholars and the educators, all of them were perfect. They all knew their stuff. They all knew their, their they it's, I was going to say they did the research. They know this like they know it's the back of the hand. I mean, they had all these facts and data and just a perspective memorized like it was their own birthday or something. I respect it. Like I said before, you had Dr. Kaba Kim in, in this and the dude is just so smooth. Um, I think his name is Dr. James Small. Um, he had this dope dashiki or whatever. I like that. You have this other uh, lovely black goddess by the name of um, I'm, I'm not going to get her name right. But she had the white hair. She had the white fro or whatever. Excuse me. In the trailers, um, something that I noticed that uh, Tariq Nasheed did with the editing is they shot her in two different locations. Like they had her outside by a fountain, then they kind of had her inside in the library setting. And I don't know why, but I really did like that. And it stood out for me. And it just kind of gave another fresh take on, you know, her perspective. So the documentary didn't get dull or boring or anything like that. And at no point did it. Um, the part two where they talked about the four prominent figures, that was my favorite. But Anyway, um, of course, they had Wycliffe John in there. You know, he was just kind of sitting back, kind of bougie, to be honest with you. Just like, yeah, you know, I'm Wycliffe John. (laughs) He's cool. And, you know, it was interesting seeing him in here because he did give sprinkles of information here and out throughout the whole documentary. But towards the end, it did focus on him solely alone because he is Haitian. He was well, I be- he was born there, I believe. I-, I didn't look it up. And it talks about, it touches a little bit towards the end on how uh, he ran for president and how uh, th- his life changed drastically because of that. Because, like, you know, black people, they just want to exploit us and rape us and, you know, take us for all our resources, just use us, use us, use us. They just want to be entertained by us on the football field, on the court, and on the stage. And they're just like, hey, good little Negro, good little nigger. You know, you can sing and dance on the stage, but when you try to get polit- political or whatever and talk about economics and all this stuff, you know, we're going to put you in your place. And so it did focus there a little bit. And it was really, really interesting to see his take on things, because before I saw this documentary, before I even knew that much about Tariq Nasheed, which I really like I said, I haven't I haven't really been diving into Tariq Nasheed, you know, more, more than a year now. But I've always heard rumors that, you know, why Clef John was like a sellout or a coon or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, man, you know, that's unfortunate, you know. But like I said, you know, we, we got to empty our cup and just still be able to receive information and learn. And I did learn something getting his take from it. And, you know, I kind of feel bad about it. So, you know, my bad, Mr. Wycliffe, you know, if you ever do want to run for president of Haiti again, I support you, my brother. So, uh, you know. He was in it too, Dr. Cobb Kimmon, the the lovely goddess with the uh, white fro. I cannot, uh, I, it was a lovely name. I just can't remember. Uh, we had another gentleman in here. I don't, what's his name? Akala or Akala? If I'm butchering your name, my bad, man. He was, he was on it too. He had very, he had strong facial features. Um, he had dress, I believe, uh, light skinned cat. Uh, he's from Haiti as well. He's from, he's from, he's Haitian. And uh, he articulated all his words uh, perfect. You know, he had so much passion, so much charisma, you know, like you you like nobody was reading from a script at all or a teleprompter. But you can tell he really, really wasn't. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure he had his notes and stuff that he was like, okay, I'm going to go over this. And of course, I'm sure that all the people in this documentary practiced what they was going to say and stuff like that. But with this particular gentleman here, you can just tell to where he was just like. He, he would, you know, be going over, you know, read, going over his notes in his head, you know, putting it out there for us to hear. But then just like just snap into passion and just he would just start pouring. Out, oh, yeah. Did I remember this right here? And da, 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 da. and this is how this happened. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like really into it. Like, OK, yeah, brother, that's what's up. Like, I mean, like these people knew their stuff or whatever. And it's just like it was so enlightening, you know, and um, I, I, I just loved every moment of it. And who else? Of course, there were some other historians as well. There was another 
uh, oh my goodness, she was a very beautiful, classy woman. Uh, and I'm, I'm the camera was crooked. If it is my bad, what is her name? Eliza or Eliza? Uh, she is a host. She is a Haitian. It was the Eliza or Eliza. And uh, she was a brown, uh, brown tone, brown. And she had like this beautiful, big, like a uh, piece of chain or whatever. And you know what? As I'm as I'm talking about this, I'm jumping around. And I, I do remember where I left off. I do want to show my receipt uh, for this movie because uh, we got to support each other in every way, in every walk of life. And I will admit, Mr. Tariq Nishi, when you was campaigning for this movie, I only gave like five or ten dollars um, because I was like, hey, I want to give more, but I just don't have it right now. I have it now, but I didn't I didn't have it at the time. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, think about that, man. If every time black people had a noble cause and I'm going to get back to the documentary in a second, if all of us gave it gave a dollar each time, I mean, we could, uh, you know, we would have a. We'll be, you know what I'm trying to say. We'll be pretty powerful. We'll be pretty, pretty uh, strong and all that good stuff. But there is my uh, receipts of the movie. I saw this, is, you know, Brandon Keith Avery here. B. Avery, Dallas, Texas representer. We was at the Magnolia Theater uh, or whatever. I, you know, I don't think my credit card information on there or nothing like that. But uh, anyway, um, but back to her. Uh, I think her name was Eliza. She's a... I, I, I was about to say, was she an attorney in Haiti or something? I think she was, but she was on it too. Um, everybody was, everybody was on it. Everybody had their own style. Everybody had their own flavor. Everybody, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Everybody had their own perspective and it was just lovely the way Mr. Tariq Nishi brought all this together. Something else that I liked about this documentary was the soundtrack or the score. Man, hold up. It was beautiful. You had a little bit of this. You had a little bit of that. You had a little bit of African boom, 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 or whatever that I don't know about that I want to learn about. Whatever it was, I loved it. I mean, it was it was it really pulled me in. Uh, it was seamless. It just flowed. It was, it was just smooth like butter. I mean, it was dope. I love the music. I love the score. I also like the artwork, too. I mean, the illustrations in this, you know, there was nice as well. There was a lot of nice artwork, a lot of paintings, a lot of drawings, a lot of sketchings, a lot of maps, a lot of this. I mean, you know, and he was on it, too. And it just didn't pop it up on the screen. You know, he was able to edit it very well, just to shoom, shoom and, you know, doing like this and having the sound effects. And I noticed all that. The sound mixing was great, um, you know, seriously. And then again, like. This dude made this this documentary in less than a year with only two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. Like I'm 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 sorry, but I, I, I'm a film fan. I, I like this. I don't even like the word film critic because I'm just a fan of film, you know, and I pay attention to the box office and editing and, and all of this. And you got all these these giant movies, millions and millions of dollars. And the editing in this movie was, you know, I don't want it, it. It was up there. It could compete. It could. I'm. I'm sorry for all the popping. It could compete. It really could. And I noticed it. So uh, you had a, a great amount of scholars and educators in there. That soundtrack was dope. Uh, we got great illustrations or whatever. And what? Let me look at my notes here. Something else Tariq Nishi was just talking about is them reenactment scenes. And them reenactment scenes was dope as hell. And I don't believe he flew to Haiti for this. I think he shot a lot of this in uh, in L. A. And um, I think in Louisiana as well, if I completely got that wrong, my bad. But I remember because I follow him on Facebook and he was like uploading some videos and there was like a big mansion that he used or whatever. And they were just showing all of the, uh, you know, all of the white supremacists and the French army and whatnot in their garb, in their uniforms and whatnot. And um, it was just this once. I mean, they had a number of reenactment scenes there. And it was legit. It was <laughs> like it was thorough. You know what I'm saying? It was like high quality. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I, I like because I'm not gonna lie. I'm a I'm a support my brothers and my sisters no matter what. But when he was talking these reenactment scenes up, I was like, right, you know, it's gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? The acting probably gonna be bad. You know, uh, I, I mean, and that's horrible that I even think that way. That's messed up. That's me. That's the conditioning that you know we are still in. That I still need to break out of this this bullshit stereotype types that we cannot produce something worthy of our oppressors or whatever i mean i like i just like that was just a revelation in this dang review or whatever but hey you know what i'm saying it is what it is what has been done to us is profound and multifaceted but 
these reenactment scenes, like it was this one general. Oh God, I can't remember his name, but it was just a shot of him on the balcony, just kind of just posing. And like Tari, he had like some wind or something, like a fan in the back, like blowing the dude's hair. And it wasn't over the top, but I was like, I was just like, that was like my favorite shot of the whole documentary. You know what I'm saying? I was like, like, even though it was a evil, like white supremacist or whatever, you know, and the French army, it was just from a production standpoint, you know, like I was like, that's what's up. Like, I was like, you are really selling this point right here. You know what I'm saying? And portraying these, these a-holes that was, um, that was oppressing our people. And, um, like the re like they had a reenactment scene, like, okay, going over to like the four prominent figures. I think his name was Makala or Michaela or something like that. Man, I just got so much to talk about. I've been talking for 20 minutes. Like I, I just got so much to say, like, uh, y'all, y'all with me here or are we together family? Y'all don't, y'all don't mind. Like, you know, let, okay. <laughs> okay. So like another, re- okay. So going back to like the four prominent figures, right? It was this dude named Makala or Michaela, right? And basically what this, what, what, what this documentary is trying to do is like, Black people, man, like, we got to get back to nature. You know what I'm saying? We got to get back to Mother Earth. And don't be believing this propaganda like that voodoo is bad. Because, like, real talk, when I was young, growing up, I was like, oh, voodoo. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm thinking, like, cannibals and stuff. Like, like that's what I thought when I was a little boy c- coming up. But it ain't even about that, man. It's like they try to, like, demonize this because they know how powerful we really are. You know what I'm saying? And this documentary, like, really flipped the script and just told you what that was. And it's just like, look. It's not just, you know, there was some of African people, not just like the voodoo wasn't like just a religious thing. It was a more spiritual thing. It was like a, a way of life, just the way you treat yourself, the way you treat other people, like all of that combined, like summed up into one. Just like just the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you do this, the way you do that. And. OK, like. What it was talking about is how it's just getting to nature and knowing all of your surroundings because they had to do with like guerrilla warfare. And so the, the guy, Makala, one of the first prominent figures or whatever, he was like an expert grandmaster of guerrilla warfare and like just knowing his environment. And I, like, I don't want to spoil nothing for y'all. Cause you need to see it for yourself. Like, I feel like I'm saying too much, but he would just like play with it. You know what I'm saying? Because he was just talking about how he would, he hadn't knew the herbs and he could formulate it in a way to like, poison uh the slave the the enslavers but at the same time he had to get the coons out the way they were called collaborators he had to get them out of the way first and like the the reenactment scene that they did with him was just like it was like on point or whatever like like it, it was it was just so thorough and just detailed you know to the t like all t's crossed all, all eyes dotted like i was just really impressed and that was like when i really started noting the reaction scenes because it was just flowing or whatever i was like wait a minute these re- like okay th- this is a nice little reaction scene right here i don't really remember reaction scenes like this in uh hidden colors the uh the religion of white supremacy or whatever so they just stepped it up and they also had like this one reenactment scene where it's like it's at nighttime and they're around a the fire and this is black Africans just doing that thing or whatever, you know, getting spiritual, doing their thing or whatever. And it would it would just like beautiful and just like it like it, it was it was captivating and like, you know, I don't know. It was very empowering. You know, it, it really was. It, it was just it, it was showing you a door that you already knew was there. You know what I'm saying? It, it was just opening for you. Just like, hey, here, here you go. You, you, you've been going this route your whole life. You know, won't you come back to your roots? You know, um, there was another figure by the name of um, Dusty Bookman. Uh, he was a Jamaican uh, cat or whatever. He played. A, and I, I'm, I don't want to spoil it. But I'm not going to regurgitate everything. The next dude, I really I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name for the life of me. But the last that I talked about was John Jean Jacques. Oh, gosh. Um, Nate Turner or Nate, not Nate Turner. I keep Nate Turner, Nate Parker, Nate Turner. Jean Jacques Desjaline, I think was his name. And what I liked about it was he was a French general and the other guy that came before him was a French general. And they talked about how powerful each guy was by kind of how different they were. You know, like one, you could, one, you know, MLK, one uh, Malcolm X or something like that. But, you know, they had that. Um, they just talked about really that I liked it. They talked about is how at the, back in the time, the Haitians and the Africans, they just 
kind of got this mindset to where they just wasn't afraid of death. Just like they wasn't afraid of death anymore. Like it just, you know, like it doesn't matter. Like even if they died, they, they were dying for a cause. It was kind of like Hydra or something like that. You know, like, okay, it doesn't matter if I die, you know, the, the seeds are already planted and somebody's going to carry the torch on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it just like, you know, it just, it, 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 it lets you, it's, this whole thing is empowering. It just makes you respect, you know, you know, Africa and Africans and Haitians, you know, just that much more and like what they're going through. And what else? What what else we got here? Uh, all the reenactment scenes was dope. Um, there was this talking about martial arts and how Capoeira was not Brazilian. It was from Africa. Um, I don't want to regurgitate everything. I've already been talking for like 28 minutes. If I want, if, cause I'll be here for an hour and a half. Uh, voodoo. Hey man. Uh, voodoo is not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. All it is is really is just being who you already are and embracing it. And, um, you know, just being in one with nature, like, what? Would, like, okay. So I work, my current day job right now, I work with a lot of Africans, a lot. I haven't been around this many Africans since I, at one time, collectively, since I've been in school uh, a number of years ago. And there is a dude, I'm not, I'm not going to name his name. I think he's from Zimbabwe. He's only been here for, I think, less than five years, maybe six. And what he talks about, of course, is completely different. But just how over there was he's from is just how everybody is one with nature and with the animals or whatever. Uh, he says it's not as much as it used to going back into, you know, ancient history or whatever. But this documentary also focused on that as well. Like. In this guerrilla warfare and this revolution, they use every single atom to their advantage. I mean, if there was a crevice in the ground, a, a leaf on a certain tree, a rock on a certain another rock or whatever, you know, they use it to the best of their ability. Tree, just I mean, and, you know, that's just wonderful. Um, I do have some gripes about the documentary, but before I get into the gripes, I just want to make sure I get all the positives about the way. Uh, but them, them Ram Acme scenes was like on super duper point, man. Um, after what? I can't read my line. Okay. Uh, so my favorite part was the four people that they touched on. After that, it was kind of the aftermath. Um, it just talked about how the doc the documentary how Haiti is being raped still today uh, by globalists, uh, one being the Bush administration and the Clinton um, administration. But what was frustrating is I kind of lost focus, not because of the documentary, but there was this a hole sitting to my left with his girl, and he kept pulling out his phone at that time. He pulled it out four times, and the fourth time I actually said something or whatever. And, uh, you know, some people don't know how to act in the theater. So I really couldn't get that third part because I kept losing focus because I was just wanting to know. Because at the end of the second part, they talk about, you know, the aftermath of uh, the revolution and how, you know, once the, everybody fought for their freedom, you know, what happened after that? Why are they so, you know, economically depressed right now? And um, I kind of was losing focus because his a-hole kept pulling out his phone or whatever. But I talked about the future, too. My only complaints about the whole documentary is, I know he was he did a, Tariq Nasheed did an amazing job, but he was still limited with his resources. And the reason why I say that is, is even though how great the reenactment scenes were, because uh, some of them were just a reenactment scene, some of them you know show fighting or whatever. It was just one scene where a black uh, slave ran up and sliced. The neck of, uh, you know, one of the, the enslavers or whatever. Everybody in the theater was like, oh, you know, like, oh, shit or whatever. You know, me too or whatever. But he was limited with his resources. And I'm not really going to knock him because through all, all the dialogue, you hear all the historians and the scholars and educators saying that, OK, Napoleon brought over 25,000, 50,000 troops or whatever. But when they're going back and forth, the kind of the most you kind of see is like a five on five skirmish or whatever. Not that it's bad because some of the reenactments, he had like some nice aerial shots too. I was like, oh snap, like you're already doing this with all the aerial shots and all that. But like, and then there was like one particular scene where they show like the French army, um, like 
like lined up. It was like a big wash. I was probably like 50 of them. And that was the closest that I kind of saw of like a giant army of, or any type of graphic or illustration of a war other than like a painting. So, I mean, of course, you're not going to, he's not going to be able to have that many extras and that many costumes and stuff like that. I mean, I know I'm, I'm asking for a lot here by saying that, you know, that is something that I, I, you know, I'm just, I just mentioned that if you're going to compete with the big leagues and like still, bro, you knocked this one out the park, like real talk. You should be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you to read sheet for this. this. This thing was dope. But like, other than that, and like, it's kind of towards the beginning, like, what was I going to say? It was like, huh. <sighs> So, so I don't want to say that part because I just don't want to spoil it for you. But at the very beginning, oh, and I'm the Hades, like the real name is IT if, or I IT or IT. But at the very beginning, they talked about Columbus in 1482 and 92 when he was coming over to uh, Hispaniola. And how they talked about how the island was split and how when he was going over to the Americas and, you know, over here the first time he saw Africa is going back the second time. I wish they kind of would have touched on a little bit more of how the Haitians were. I mean, it was just kind of like they came over here and then they enslaved black people. I mean, OK. I mean, we know that's what happened, but a little bit more detail there. Um but at the same time, you know, I do appreciate the length of this this documentary it came in at like one hour and 45 minutes, which I think uh, I think this one right here is like two and a half hours or two hours. And uh, I'm going to say two and two hours, 30 minutes. That's the same two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes is the runtime on this. Of course, this is King Flex Entertainment support King Flex Entertainment support King Flex Entertainment 1804 movie dot com 1804 movie dot com. HiddenColorFilms.com, HiddenColorFilms.com. Um, I don't know the runtime. It doesn't matter. But or HiddenColorFilm.com, singular or whatever. I thought it was films, but it was it was so much, man. Like you know, I I so much I want to say, but I don't want to spoil it for you. I think this DVD comes out in um in November. I think November fifteenth or the twenty fifth or something like that. I don't remember, but I will be buying it. Um, you know, I'm going to support it that way. I'm going, I supported it by buying the ticket here. It was $20, but I will pay the extra, you know, IMAX tickets don't even cost that much, but I'm not complaining. You know, this dude needs the money, um, because he put a lot of work into this and, you know, I only gave, I wish I would have paid the 125 for my name to be in the credits, but at the same time I didn't have it. But guys, um, am I going to rate this? I usually rate things one out of 10. But uh, I'm going to rate this as you need to see this movie. You need to support it. Give your money. Go go to 1804movie.com and just get $5. Or just buy the DVD. Just buy it. Support it that way. That's my rating is that it's good. It's off the chain. And you need to support it. Now, if I were to give it a real rating, I'm, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 uh, for documentaries. Uh, yeah. And, I'm yeah, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Yes, a 9 out of 10. If I had to rate 1804... The Hidden History of Haiti. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Do you want to see 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti? Do you not care? Did my review turn you on? Did it turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. And let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why. And still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers. Get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click the bell and be notified when I do make uploads. Also, guys, go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. I do have written reviews. Uh, and I'm launching a mobile version of the site pretty soon. It's going to be there, there in a couple of weeks. Also, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy for all of you by providing a link to all that good stuff in the link in the description box down below. 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti is a lovely documentary directed and written and produced by Tariq Nasheed. My brother, I just want to say it again. Kudos to you. Um, you, des you deserve it. F the haters. I try not to cuss because my mom tries to watch my videos sometime. But keep doing what you're doing, brother. They always going to shut you down, man. Uh, real talk. Um, like, 
just keep doing what you're doing, man. I know, I know you had a YouTube channel that was like a 90 something thousand and they shut you down, but then you got Melanin Gift or whatever. Then you, you got your, um, you, you got SarikaLeet.com, you know, then you got your ISM radio. So keep doing what you're doing, my brother. You know what I'm saying? I support you. Uh, we got to stick together. Uh, all we're trying to do is empower us. Don't be listening to all this propaganda crap. Uh, all these people coming out with these uh, crap articles talking about be I'm black uh, identity extremists and stupid stuff like that. I mean, I, we just trying to be who we are. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody uh, let you be afraid of who you are. Embrace who you are. Be proud of who you are. Be unapologetic about everything. You know what I'm saying? We got to work together because uh, I'm woke as hell. Uh, the year 20, 2044 is coming soon and ain't gonna be no majority and by 2053 if we don't get our stuff together uh, that's $1,700 that we are worth gonna go down to zero thank you Antonio Moore and your vet card now for those but anyway man uh, real talk I'm just a guy that likes movies and I want to talk about them all the time uh, somebody gonna talk oh he is an extremist no I, I, I love my people just like other people love their people too Anyway, this outro is is been way too long. Tariq Nasheed, again, my brother, uh, I'm proud of you, man. I cannot wait for Hidden Colors Five. We're gonna go all the way to Hidden Colors Fifty Thousand. Yes. But anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in for my opinion slash review for HN4: The Hidden History of Haiti. Directed, written, and produced by Tariq Nasheed. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.